I'm very passionate about sharing my knowledge and actually uh, educating. And we, there's going to be a lot of information that I want to share with you today. But we only have a limited amount of time. I'm going to focus on five ways that you can outrank your competitors that you can do today and start making money. Things, little things that you can change that can flip your digital marketing strategy and show you the results in a very short amount of time. So my first question to you guys, what is the best place online to make new business and find new leads? So you can shout at me. Wherever your customers are. Wherever your customers are. What else? Local directories, social media, right? Some of that stuff. All right, so let's put some numbers to this question. Would you be surprised to find out that 89% of customers, before they look, when they look for a new product or new services, they do what? They Google it, right? They search it. Think about the last time you bought anything. Didn't you do price comparison online? Didn't you go read about that consultant you met at a conference and you looked him up and see what kind of services he provide? The second number is really good. This actually, this case study is from about two, three years ago. I think it's about 85% of us do not go to the second page of Google if we don't find what we're looking for. What do we do if we don't find what we're looking for on the first page of Google? Since the search criteria, right? We get more uh, 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 detailed what is exactly that we're looking for. And why do we do that, right? We have that belief in the back of our heads that if it's not on the first page of Google, it's not good enough. Do you agree with me? Yeah? Okay. So why do you expect any difference from your clients? If you are not on the first page of Google, they simply will not bother to find you. It's the first page or not. That's what we're facing today. And the five stages of learning that I'm going to walk you through is going to get you to that point. The most important number here is that 43% of all searches happen on Google, that's like bazillions if that's a real word, have a local intent. What does that mean? When we search for something, we usually know two things, what we want and where we want to find it. So we look for a chartered accountant in Toronto, used cars in Markham, a criminal lawyer in Ajax, right? We usually know what we want and where to find it. We usually want to deal with local people. So what do we learn from this? few numbers here. We learned that you're, the people who are exactly looking for your product are searching on it. They expect you to be on the first page of Google, and majority of them are looking for exactly the location that you offer your service at. Is that all right? All right. Then, in order to understand how to rank on the first page of Google, we need to realize what ways, what happens on the first page of Google? What kind of results show on the first page of Google? There's so many different types of results, but I'm going to put them in two buckets. The first one is very easy, the advertising, right? You have ads at the top, and we call that search engine marketing. So you pay per click. So every time someone clicks on your ad, you pay a dollar, two dollar, whatever it is. But if, if your ad showed up and nobody clicked on it, you're not paying a penny. So Optimizing keywords and what you want to spend your money on is very important. But what's more important is how to get that traffic without paying for advertising. So the second group of results that show on Google is called organic, or we call it search engine optimization. Google and major search engines like Bing and, and all the other big guys share six verticals of results, right? So you can rank as a regular link, as an image, as Google uh, Places, as maps, as videos, as news, as shopping, all of this called universal search results. So if you Google anything about how to install something, you will find a video on the first page, right? So these are all the verticals that we're going to work with to make sure not just that you rank once on the first page, you rank more than once. I want you to double your odds to dominate that first page of Google. All right. So before we set the stage, I want to make sure that you understand the difference between the two types of search uh, marketing and search engine optimization. So as you can see, search engine optimization is a long-term strategy. Usually it takes three to six months to see real results. 
SCM is like opening a tap of water. You start paying for leads, you start paying for traffic, leads come through, sales come through, and this is the major differences. But your, the, 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 the search engine uh, optimization traffic, let's say you did SEO for a year and you just stopped. You are not gonna go back to page 10. Let's say that you were on page 10 a year from last year and now you're on page one. But let's just say you just completely stopped. You are not gonna go back to page 10. Your ranking is gonna fluctuate because your competitors are optimizing, but you are not gonna lose all of that hard work. As soon as you close your campaign, as soon as you shut off the tap, there's more traffic, there's no more leads, and you're back exactly where you are. There is a lot of misconception around paying Google will impact my organic ranking. That is absolutely wrong. There's two different divisions of Google and your paid advertising does not impact your organic listing in any way, shape or form. So any, just make sure that if anyone tells you this, just tell them you're wrong. All right, so to simplify this complicated stuff, SEO, I call it, is like buying a car. And SCM is like leasing a car. So let's say your car is $20,000, you're gonna pay $1,000 for a month for the next two years, whatever that is. It's, it's expensive, $20,000 is a lot of money. But after two years, after you pay off your car, you still have the car. You're still gonna get the mileage out of it. And you're not paying anymore for it. When you stop leasing a car, you have no car, right? But it solves an immediate problem. This is my high season, I want traffic now, I want leads now, so I go with SCM. There is no wrong or right way to use a car. You just have to choose what's the best for your business. I usually recommend for all my clients is to do a hybrid strategy. You gotta do SEO ongoing for whatever you offer. No matter what you offer, there are people looking for it. And if you're not gonna see this result in the first three to six months, you're gonna see it a little bit later. But once you're on the first page of Google, you're really laughing. And for SCM, only use it in your high season. You know when is traffic. You know when there are people looking for your services. Uh, we did a lot of case studies with Canadian Tire, and some of the results we found that seasonal traffic can impact your conversion rate by 300%. During your high season, people tend to make this move 300 times more, right? So make sure when you spend money, you're not spending money across the year, you're only spending on your high season. All right, so let's address the pink elephant in the room. Does social media impact your ranking? If I spend more time on Facebook and social media and all of that stuff, is that gonna help me rank higher? If you agree with me, lift your hand. Yeah? All right. So I'm not gonna answer this question. I'm gonna let Matt Cuts. who knows Matt Cuts? Matt Cuts is the chief engineer, or used to be the chief engineer of Google algorithm. He says, Google treats Facebook and Twitter posts like any other web page for search, but not as a ranking factor. I'm so sorry to disappoint you. Spending as much time on social media will not help your organic ranking. I tell you, be on social media to uh, not for SEO, but to entertain, inform your most valuable audience. Social media is not a sales channel for the most products. It's really good if you have a product that is 20, 50 bucks, beauty products, something very easy. But I'm not gonna buy a house because I saw an ad on Facebook. I'm not gonna hire a consultant because I saw an ad on Facebook. It's an interruptive. I'm on Facebook to uh, catch up with my friends, to send pictures to my mom. It's, it's, I'm not gonna leave all of this and look deep into your products because I saw an ad on or post. Use social media after you engage me, after I sign up for a newsletter or sign up for your, download your white paper, now invite me to Facebook, share informative information so I, you keep top of mind. When the time comes to look for someone in your area to hire, now I know you from Facebook, but Facebook is not really a sales channel. It, just take that sentence with a grain of salt. It's different for everyone, but for the majority, you will be disappointed if you approach social media as a sales channel. All right, so how to outrank your competitors and generate more sales. This is why we're all here today. Step, oh, so 
The reason that I actually love search engine marketing and search engine optimization is it's a numbers game. It's truly a numbers. If you can't figure out the number, you're going to win this war. So I advise you that to use tools. There are so many tools out there, free or premium. Uh, but if you can nail down what people are clicking on, if I change this banner from a, a graphic to a, a lifestyle, how much your conversion increase, getting that data back into your business, that will be your power. There is no Bible when it comes to digital marketing. It's only your own data that will prove yourself right or wrong, should you continue in this direction or that direction. So get some tools and start doing things on the high note. All right, so step number one, we're gonna talk about five steps today. Step number one, fixing technical issues. Uh, so you are not, like, you can't rank on the first page of Google if your website is, 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 is not, uh, is, have broken pages and broken links on the home page, is not mobile friendly, all of this stuff. If you don't invest in your own website, why should Google do, right? So make sure that all your docs in a row, all your images are optimized, all the title tags are optimized, and this is why you really need tools. Because you can't go check every page of your website manually. You need a tool to check every day and tell you. You don't want to wait for a client to call you. I'm like, hi, I'm trying to buy your product, but your page is down. You don't want to wait for that phone call. You want to be proactive. So this screenshot is from Green Lotus Tools. Uh, how many of you know that we have SEO tools? All right. So if you click on any of those errors, the page will expand and actually show you what those errors and how to fix them. So you don't have to do this manually. We can guide you through this. Step number two, keyword research. This is very important. If you can figure out how to choose your keywords effectively, then this is the only thing that I want you to leave with this today. So what makes a good keyword a good keyword? You can yell some answers at me. Boom, boom, boom. Have to be relevant to your business. Have to be relevant to your business. Number of people looking for it, maybe, right? So it, back in the days, two years ago, before we launched Green Lotus Tools, we used to do a go-to keyword planner, a lot of other sources, and export, do a search for 2,000 keyword, export three different files, and then try to make sense of them all. But not anymore. Green Lotus connects all the dots for you on the same screen. So let's look at this. We give you five metrics to judge. Is this keyword worth to optimize for, or I should not be worried? So the first two columns, the global searches and the local searches, this will tell you how many people globally or locally are searching for your keywords. This data is coming from Google Keyword Planner. The third one, the bid competition, this data is coming from Google AdWords. It shows you how competitive is the keyword, how fierce is that competition. So the higher the competition, then the lower your odds are. Then the search trend, this data is coming from Google Web Trends. So every chart here is a month. So that will tell you the seasonality of your product. It's very important to understand the seasonality of your product. The last metrics is a new metrics we invented, KEI. It stands for Keyword Effectiveness Index. I know it's a little bit too technical, but basically I want to show you which keyword to go for and which keyword to ignore. The higher the KEI is, the better. And ideally, a keyword with a high KEI is a keyword that have a lot of search volume and a low competition rate. This is the keyword that you want to focus your effort on, right? All right, we're still in step number one, by the way. Uh, optimize your site content. It's very important that you take handle of everything that is happening on your website. And for the first time, entrepreneurs and business owners can know exactly how well optimized their website. So this screenshot, for example, is 55% optimized. So now you know where you stand, and in two, three months, you know where you stand. We scan and keep the data for 12 months. SEO is a long-term strategy. And you can leave notes to yourself. When did you do this? When did you upgrade your WordPress? All of that stuff, you can leave trails for yourself to understand. So as you can see here, this is, we will show you what's wrong with your website. So for example, short title tags on 67 pages. When you click on this error, the page will expand and show you page by page where is the errors and how to to, to fix them. You can export them, you can give them to your uh, web developer or content manager to edit them as well. So let's just make SEO easy because the biggest fear of SEO for entrepreneurs is that they, they don't know how to handle it. They don't know where to start. So they prefer to ignore it. I don't want you to ignore it. I want you to win online. 
Step number two, look at that. Spy on your competitor. It's very important to spy on your competitors. Why? Because those competitors of yours that are ranking on the first page of Google are ranking there for a reason. It's not just because they're old or they're famous. There are specific indications that can tell us why they're ranking on the first page of Google. We need to figure out what are those factors, what are they doing right, and do it better. It's OK to copy a little bit of your competitors, not copy text and, and images, but to copy the, the strategies that they're doing. So this is all the off-page factors that determine your ranking on, on, the, uh, uh, on the search engines. And as you can see, I love Apple to Apple comparisons. You can pinpoint where you're lacking and where you're winning. And again, this is also a screenshot from the tools. Spy on your competitors. While I did spend a lot of time doing research and using your tools, but I might be missing something. So we have another tool that you simply write your competitors' uh, um, uh, keywords, and you can see what's going on. We check ranking on all six verticals. So those are the six verticals. We'll tell you if you or your competitor have ranked as an ad, image, videos, news, places, and shopping. It's vital to know where you stand against your competitors. And again, we keep the data for 12 months. So if you rank on page number 10 now, and after three months you're page number five, you still haven't seen any results on the front end of traffic. But at least you have an indication that you are moving in the right direction. Don't give up. You moved five pages in, in three months. Keep at it. And that's where most entrepreneurs quit, because they don't see results immediately. But if you have factors that tells you you're moving up or moving down, it will give you the motivation to keep going. And this is what I was talking about. We have a tool where you can put your competitor's website. Our tool will go scan the competitor website and tell you what are the most used keywords on his website. And we will present you with the same amount of data so you can evaluate, is this a good keyword or a bad keyword? You might be missing some of those keywords when you do your keyword research. So it's always good to keep an eye on your competitors and find out what are they optimizing for. Step number three. This is about 70% of the factors that determine your ranking on search engines. With SEO, we put it in two piles. Some tasks are called on-page SEO, and some tasks are called off-page SEO. On-page SEO is what you have to do on your website, optimizing your content, fixing the title tags, all of that stuff. Off-page SEO is what builds your domain authority. So why would Google rank a specific website on the first page? Or in other words, it's trustworthy. Google wants to deliver the most trustworthy and popular information to their customers, right? But think about it this way. If a celebrity talked about your product, right, you all of a sudden become famous. We are famous by association. The same thing goes online. So let's say I'm an accountant and I wrote a, a, an article about HST. It's very informative. And at the end of the article, I say, for more information, click here to see the government website and more data. In this case, who is more authoritative, my website or the government website? Government? government? We all agree on the government? OK, right on. So you're right. So we want to reverse engineer this process and make people talk about us, make more people link to our stuff. And we got to do this more effectively. It's not just telling your friend, can you link to me? No, we got to use some tools. We got to use it. You got to share your news and updates effectively with the world. So how we do this? First, search engine submissions. It's very important if you have a new website to tell search engines that you exist. So submit your website and make sure that they index all the pages on your website and they will tell you if there's any errors or if pages are not indexable. So it's very important to know what search engines are, are, are they seeing you or not, just as a step one. Local directories. We saw that 40% of searches are local. This, out of all the presentation I'm gonna do today, could be your quickest win. If you can optimize your local listing online, you can outrank your competitors a lot faster. There's something called NAP, and you have to have a consistent NAP. What is a NAP? NAP stands for name, address, and phone number. So your business across the web should have a consistent NAP. 
So if your address is one young street, and in one website you wrote it one young st and another one one young street stret, right? Those are different. So make sure you claim all your business listing online. They have the same business name, the same address, and the same phone number. What else? Press releases. Who publish like frequent blog posts and news here? Right, you guys all have to. There's no shortage of new information about your business. You have to share with the world. You have to be the subject matter of expertise. People don't hire salespeople. People hire people they trust. And how to build that trust is providing helpful tips, news updates, all of this stuff, I have to see you not as a salesperson. I have to see you as a subject matter of expertise. So there are a lot of free and premium press release distribution services and content submission. Do some digging, spend some money on it, because when you do a premium press release distribution and a local magazine picks up your press release, that is a highly trusted website. Imagine the Beaches local real estate have listed you as a consultant, right? That is a highly authoritative local directory. I'm not talking about like big, massive, million dollar companies. No, the small ones. The, the links that you should go for is the links that nobody can get or robots cannot get. How many of you got that email, pay us $10 and we'll submit your website to 10,000 websites? Did you get that email? What are those emails? Spam. Spam, exactly. So you, gotta, you can't cheat the system. Back in the day when I started, before SEO became an industry, a lot of people benefited from this and a lot of people made a lot of money. But now, the algorithm has developed so much that you literally cannot cheat the system. So do things authentically. Uh, and then monitor your links. With Green Lotus Tools, again, we will scan your profile, your backlink profile every month and keep the historical data for 12 months. So at the end of three to six months, you can tell this is the result. I had only 20 links. Now I have 200 links. So you can keep an eye. So you can't just, your efforts are not just wasted on the air. Hey, can I ask you a question? Please. So uh, earlier during your presentation, you mentioned that investing time in social media does not necessarily affect your search engine ranking. However, uh, on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, Google Plus, whatever, you, you can link back to your website. That is a really good question. That is a really good question. That is a really good question. Thanks for asking. I'm just going to summarize it for the people who didn't uh, hear it. So uh, he said that on social media, you can put links to link back to your website, and that will build your authority, right? OK. So there's two types of links. There's a link called follow, and there's a co link called no follow. A follow link is a regular link that link from my website to another, but allows the trustworthiness and what we call link juice to pass from a site to another. And that's the regular type of link. The no follow link acts the same way, it still links you to another website, but does not allow any of the link juice or the trustworthiness to pass. And all links on social media are no follow. And do you know why they're doing that? Because they don't want people to spam the system. So if you post 100 links a day on your social media, it's not going to impact in this matter whatsoever. But again, you're posting to inform, educate, and entertain your audience on social media. Don't do SEO on social media. Only do social media on social media. All right? Did I answer your question? Thank you, yes. Awesome. Step number four, local listing. Again, this is your quickest win. If you leave with nothing today, I want you to focus on this. Because how many of you are local businesses, want to deal with local people, right? Yeah, the majority of people in the room. So claim your business online, all of them. Sometimes Google have your business online, but it's not verified because they got the data from Yellow Pages or another data provider. So just Google your name and make sure that you're actually the owner of those business listing on Yelp and Foursquare, all of those. I want you to go one by one and make sure that you claim the ownership of your listing because by doing that, you're telling Google that first, I'm a human being, second, I'm alive, and I care about my business. 
Have a consistent nap, we talked about that. Optimize your location and listing pages. This is very important. Do not confuse search engines. If you have multiple locations or multiple services, have a dedicated page for each location you have. If you have two addresses and two phone numbers on the same page, which one, right? Try to help search engines to understand and identify you with a, just a consistent nap. So make sure if, you, if you're a realtor and you have multiple listings, make sure that each listing have a, uh, an optimized individual pages and so on and so forth. Encourage reviews online. This is what we call the sentimental analysis. So this Google gathered their sentimental analysis from Google Maps, from Facebook reviews, from Foursquare, from Yelp, from all of those people. So encourage your customers to leave reviews for you. There are ethical way and there are non-ethical way. I recommend you to offer the ethical way. Uh, and don't scam the system, don't do emails and just give yourself reviews because Google knows that this email that you just created have no past for it, right? So they will start thinking, are you trying to spam us? And if they said yes, you will be in trouble. Encourage real people, happy customers. Give them a 50 bucks Starbucks review or something. I'm like, were you happy today at my business? Did you like the service we offered you? Like, awesome. Would you like a $20 Starbucks gift card? Oh yeah, what can I do? Like, post a review for us. It's, it's that simple. And this is a little bit advanced. Uh, there's something called H card or micro formats in general. Uh, and the way we use micro formats is to identify certain uh, 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 copy on your page. So there are micro formats for business uh, addresses or reviews or, or, or recipes. The, 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 it looks exactly the same on the front end, but on the back end it tells Google that this is an actual business name or this is an actual phone number. So for example, let's talk about our beloved celebrity Paris Hilton, right? So if you have Paris Hilton on a web page, is it the celebrity or it's an actual hotel in Paris? I'm simplifying it a little bit, but if you use micro format, Google will understand that this is an actual hotel. It's not, we're not talking about the celebrity here. So Google it, it's not really that difficult to implement. If you know a little bit of HTML, this can get you a long way. Step number four. Now we talked about the ethics of SEO. How to really optimize the, the, the core web pages of your business. Now I'm gonna take you a step above. How to dominate the first page of Google. It's very important. I don't want you to just get one result on the first page. I want to get you two and three. I want you to be ranked as a regular listing, as a local map, as an image, as a shopping, all of this stuff. The more real estate you take from the home page, from, sorry, from the first page of Google, the more clicks and the more uh, leads you have. And anything that appears different than that blue link and, and copy, so if, if, if an image showed from your website or a video or a press release, anything that looks different than that blue link, get like double and triple the click through. Because your eyes automatically get drawn to that video. I wanna watch, I, I don't wanna read, just tell me what it is, right? So you can click on that video right from the first page of Google. Wouldn't you like to have your product demonstration video rank on the first page? Why, right? it cuts all the, the steps. Come to my website, click here to see the demo and then see the demo. Just right from the first page of Google, see my demo. That will increase your conversions by time. Every click you ask someone to take on your website to convert, you lose about half the people. You lose about half the people. You only have three seconds. Three seconds, all what you have. All right, so let's talk about this. YouTube. YouTube is the second largest search engine. And guess what? It's also owned by Google, right? So optimizing your YouTube videos are not that hard. Just make sure that you have good title tags, good descriptions, you link to your website from YouTube. There's so many blog posts and articles out there that can actually tell you how to do this. Images, um, we're gonna talk about that later. This is very important, step number five. This is the last step and I just really want you to make sure that you understand this part. If you can understand the consumer purchase circle, you can win online every time. So when we look for a new product or a new services, we usually go through three steps. First step is browsing. So when I'm browsing something, let's say I'm engaged and I'm gonna look for a home, I search for new homes. What's in the market, right? And then I started to know something else. I wanna leave actually a markup. 
So I look for new homes in marketing in Markham and then start what? Comparing. And when I actually know what I want, my search will be new detached homes in Markham for sale from 400. Just an example. Your deciding decision, your, your decision making is a very long tail keyword. So the, the, the very narrow keywords, we call them short tail. The long keywords, we call them long tail. I always want you to optimize your products for the long tail. Because when you optimize for the long tail, you already have the short tail in there. But if someone searched for exactly new homes for market or new detached homes for market for sale, and that's what you have, the likelihood of you outranking your competitor because you're optimizing for this keyword is a lot higher. And guess what? This is the exact product you offer. So why won't you? Right? So forget ranking for just kitchen design. Like that doesn't mean anything. Right? Focus on the very specifics of your business. All right. 50% of all search mobiles lead to a conversion. Look at the last time you looked for anything online on your mobile. You wanted to get a location, you wanted to call someone. Mobile is very important. Every year we actually say this is the mobile year. It's been consistent for five years. And this year, sorry, next year is where mobile searches will uh, uh, overpass desktop traffic. It's mobile is off the hook. All right, step number five. When you spend your money online, spend it wisely. I don't want you to send traffic to your homepage. I did not see your homepage, but your homepage is the worst page of your website. You have everything. Look at me, our Facebook, and this and that. It's not helping. If you find me organically without paying for this, go ahead. But if I paid $5 for you to come to my page, I want a concise view. So this is a landing page. You only have two conversions. It's mobile optimized. And this is from a product, product that we're launching. I'll tell you a little bit about it soon. So I hope that you learned something today. And to understand that everything is marketing. Uh, I, I'm sure that your product and services are fabulous, are wonderful. But if I can't find it, how good it is. It's very important to make yourself findable.